chance for Carl Crawford to win it. He's had a flair for the dramatic, especially at home. To center field, Jackson going back. It's over his head. Carl Crawford has done it again. A flair for the dramatic as he walks off with his teammates. The Red Sox win it. Four to three. A great night last night. The Red Sox try to keep it going tonight as they welcome in the Chicago Cubs for the first time in forever. It's the Cubs and Red Sox, game one of a three-game series. Hi again, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo, and welcome to Red Sox Baseball. It has been dramatic around here at Fenway Park over the last week, and the Red Sox come in having won their last six games straight. They're doing with hitting and pitching, and especially at the end of the game, pitching-wise. Jonathan Papelbon, their closer, has been terrific, not only saving games, but finishing them off, and last night grabbed a win. Papelbon picked up his eighth save of the season on Wednesday night against the Tigers. He struck out two in one inning of work and threw a very economical 16 pitches. Last night was able to get out of a bases loaded one-out jam by striking out back. Back-to-back Tigers hitters to end the top of the ninth. He earned his second win of the season. He's allowed just one run and had 11 Ks in his last seven appearances. It's been amazing for the Red Sox closer. He hopes to keep it going here tonight as the Red Sox welcome the Cubs. We welcome Jerry Remy and Jerry. Jonathan Papelbon, very inconsistent last year, but this year has been outstanding. Well, Don, he's got a swagger back, and he's got the swagger back because he's pitching so darn well right now. I mean, he has tremendous confidence in what he's doing. And when he showed those clips of just a moment ago of Papelbon, you notice the fastball. It's very explosive for him right now. He's back up to 96, 97 with it. Now, we didn't see that a year ago, and it's really exploding late. They call it late life in baseball, and that's exactly what he's got in it right now. And he's striking out an awful lot of guys with that fastball to go along with the split-fingered fastball and the occasional breaking ball. But right now is as good a stretch as I've seen Powell Bond be in in a long, long time. Well, he hopes to keep it going tonight as the Red Sox and Cubs are coming your way in a bit. We're back with more from Fenway right after this. Game one of a three-game series between the Cubs and the Red Sox. Hi again, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth for game one of this three-game series. Well, the Red Sox hope to get to the Cubs tonight, a team that obviously they don't see very often, but the Cubs are off to a relatively good start. They're five and a half games back in the National League Central heading into this weekend series. Let's meet the Cubs. They've got some good players coming in, and they've played good baseball for the most part. Soriano is off to a great start in his fifth season with the Cubs, tied for second in the National League with 11 home runs and leads the team with 23 RBIs. Castro picking up right where he left off last year's stellar rookie 
rookie season where he finished fifth in rookie of the year voting. Astros currently tied for the major league lead in hits with 59. And we know about Matt Garza. He's 2-1 and one in his last four starts the season with the Cubs for the first time. He's 7-4 and four in his career against the Red Sox, and he'll pitch on Sunday. Well, a new team is in town to face the Red Sox, and the Red Sox have some new players as well. With more, here's Heidi Wadney. That's right, John. The Red Sox made some moves over the last 24 hours, most notably acquiring left-handed pitcher Franklin Morales from Colorado for a player to be named later or cash considerations. Now, Mor- Morales arrived here at Fenway Park this afternoon and said he is ready to pitch, but Terry Francona said they're tr- going to try to stay away from him tonight let him get his feet under him. Theo Epstein also talked about what Morales can bring to the team. Uh, Morales is going to come in and, and uh, be the second lefty in our bullpen. And he's somebody who uh, we think has some upside. We can get him throwing strikes consistently. He's a really hard thrower, former top prospect. And we think he's got you know, some upside there in that, from that second left-hander position. 25-year-old Morales has made 14 appearances out of the bullpen this season for Colorado with a 3.86 ERA. To make room for Morales, the Red Sox designated Hideki Okajima for assignment. Dan Wheeler was activated from the disabled list, and Michael Bowden was sent back to AAA in the corresponding move. The Red Sox also signed Kevin Millwood to a minor league contract as rotation depth. He is headed to Fort Myers for extended spring training. The Sox also sent Jose Iglesias back to Pawtucket and brought up Drew Sutton, who can play any infield position and the outfield as well. In fact, he was taking fly balls off the green monster early today. Finally, to make room for Sutton on the 40-man roster, the Red Sox also designated Daniel Nava for assignment. Don? Thanks, Heidi. Doug Davis started the year at AAA Iowa. So far, 0-1 with a 1.80 with the Cubs. Back at the first pitch after this. Brought to you by Jordan's Furniture, AT&T, Toyota's official website for deals by Toyota.com, and by Southwest Airlines. Well, the rain has lifted, and it is a beautiful night here at Fenway Park as the Cubs come to town for the first of three. The Red Sox have taken the field, so let's check out the visiting Chicago Cubs starting nine. 
Starlin Castro is at shortstop with Darlin Barney at second base. Jeff Baker is at third base. He bats third. Ramos Ramirez is the DH in the cleanup spot with Carlos Pena at first base. Marlon Bird is in center field. He bats sixth. Alfonso Soriano in left. Reed Johnson, the former Toronto Blue Jays, in right field. He bats eighth. And Coy Hill does the catching. He bats ninth. On the mound for the Red Sox is John Lester, his 10th start of the year, 5 and 1 with a 3.28 earned run average. He's worked in 57 and two thirds innings and has 58 Ks. Opponents are hitting at 229 against John Lester. And a six inning effort last time out against the Yankees and a win in which he gave up four runs, walked four, and struck out seven. The Red Sox defense is brought to you by Jordan's Furniture. The Red Sox are fourth in the American League with 21 errors in 43 games. Kevin Euclid at third base. Jed Lowry the shortstop. Dustin Pedroia at second. And Adrian Gonzalez the first baseman. Left to right. Kyle Crawford, Jacoby Ellsbury, and Mike Cameron. And Jared Saltalamaki are doing the catching for John Lester. Umpiring crew tonight. Brian Onora has a play calling the balls and strikes. It is Alfonso Marquez at first base, Ed Hickox at second base, and Ed Rapuano is the crew chief. He's at third. We're available. This telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your television remote. Enjoy the game. Buenas noches, amigos. And John Lester ready to work to Starlin Castro. Leads it off for the Cubs. And the first pitch of this one is right in there for strike one and we're underway. Starlin Castro off to a great start, hitting at 331 on the year. Top the Cubs order. The home run and 20 runs batted in. Up the middle, ranging is Petroya to the backhand. Fires to first for out number one. Don, you talk about the Cubs. I mean, they're second in the league in batting average, but in runs scored, they're ninth in the league. So they've had some problems driving in guys. They've had plenty of base runners. But not able to score a lot of those base runners. Mike Quaddy, the manager of the Cubs. And the Cubs are five and a half games back at the St. Louis Cardinals in the National League East. Heading into tonight's action. That puts them in fifth place in the NL Central. One out for Darwin Barney, the second baseman. He went to camp with the Cubs this spring. He was earmarked for Triple A, battling for Triple A job, and as it turns out, he starts the years there, starting second baseman. Yeah, one of the real nice stories of spring training. Barney fights it off foul as he gets jammed and flips it foul. It's one and one. Right, it's ninth in the National League with a 322 batting average coming in. Leads Major League rookies in batting average. Well, we know the Red Sox travel well, and we're learning that the Cubs travel well. They're all over this ballpark. As this is on the ground to third base, picked by Euclid. On to first, and there's two down. That change up that time from John Lester, the ground ball to Kevin Euclid. He stays down with it and is able to record that out at first base. Here's the change up from John Lester, keeps it down in the zone. The result, the top spin ground ball to third base. They are all over Fenway Park. They're all over Yaki Way and all over Boston as the Red Sox here welcome the Cubs and their fans. Very similar to when the Red Sox went to Wrigley a few years back. As Jeff Baker stands in and takes ball one away. Baker the third base another big batting average 342 with a home run and 12 runs batted in. To left and a base hit for Jeff Baker. Two out single, first Cubs base runner of the night. Now Baker also gets a change up from Lester, but this one stays up in the zone just a little bit, and he's able to line it into left field for the two out base hit. There's the change up location up outside corner, and Baker hooks it for the hit. Now, this atmosphere tonight was a little bit like a Yankee atmosphere. Yes. Fans everywhere, out in the streets, all around the city. Many of them getting their first look at Fenway Park. Two down in the first. Baker at first. And here's Ramos Ramirez who sends one foul down the left field line out of play. Was the Cubs able to use a DH in this American League venue? 
And Ramirez is the DH tonight, hitting at 287. The home run and 15 runs batted in. Last eight games has been hot. 11 for 32 at 344. Usually puts up a lot of RBIs, 32 years old, and has surpassed the 100 RBI mark six times in the last 10 years. Look at his numbers in 124 interleague games. He was playing at third base when the Red Sox visited Wrigley Field. The DH tonight waiting on an 0 2 pitch. This is hooked into left field for a base hit over is Crawford as Baker takes second on the single by Ramirez. Well, the first four hitters in the lineup have never faced John Lester. It's the cut fastball from Lester this time down and in, and a pretty nice piece of hitting there by Ramirez. Moves a hitting streak now to four straight games for him. Two down, first and second, and Carlos Pena coming up. Pena 237, with five home runs and 17 runs batted in in his first year with the Cubs. For all those very good seasons in Tampa Bay. Joining the Cubs, having amassed 230 home runs prior to arriving. He's an all-star in 2009 and has averaged 36 home runs in each of the last four seasons. As he takes ball one. He has got five career home runs against John Lester. It has been hot lately as you see the numbers over the last 11 games. He's homered in five of the last 14 games. Did not have a home run in the first 25 games of the year for the Cubs. Time called late, and Lester lets it fly. Red Sox winning six games in a row heading into this three game series against the Cubs. Jerry, I wish we were doing the game tomorrow to see Terry Francona in his throwback uniform. <laughs> I saw a little of it today. It's not the most flattering on the manager. So he can't bury him tomorrow. We'll bury him tonight even before he has it on. But it's a white hat. and He's going to look great in it. <laughs> he's looking forward to wearing it. That's for sure. <laughs> one ball, one strike to Carlos Pena. Just look at the uniforms that will be worn here tomorrow as part of the throwbacks. The Red Sox on the right, and Terry Francona and the Red Sox be wearing white hats. Also, be at a beach near you selling ice cream soon. And the Red Sox have no logo on the insurance. Nothing. The Cubs have Cubs on theirs, and the hat just solid white for Tito tomorrow night. Really looking forward to that. One one. To Carlos Pena. That'll drop in there for strike two. One and two. Curveball from Lester. Curveball that time from John Lester. First one of the night. Stayed inside. It was supposed to be away, but he picks up the inside corner. Two on for the Cubs is a threat here in the first inning. Baker at second. Ramirez at first, two down. And a 1 2 pitch coming to Carlos Pena. In the air, foul. Now, Pena, one of the more patient hitters in this lineup for the Cubs. They, uh, they don't walk very much. As a matter of fact, as a team, they are last in the National League in walks. Marlon Bird waiting on deck. A 
Cubs have had good hitting average wise but near the bottom pitching wise with a 4.50 ERA only Houston with a higher earned run average. So one two is away and it's two and two. And Sox in a similar shift tonight as they have been in the past with Payne at the plate when he was a member of the Rays. Pedroia is in short right field camped out there. And Salta Lamaki out to talk to Lester as so you see the defensive alignment for Carlos Pena. Of all the Cubs, Red Sox certainly have the best read on Carlos Pena with all the action he's seen as a member of the Tampa Bay Rays. Two on, two down, and time called again. Two two pitch. Full count, and everybody be on the move. Lester got Castro to ground out, Barney to ground out, but singles for Baker and Ramirez. And a full count here for Carlos Pena. Runners will get a start. Pena hits it high in the air out to center field. Ellsbury now going back. It'll take him to the dirt of the track to make the catch. The Cubs strand a pair. Red Sox are coming up. In the bottom of the first and the Red Sox starting lineup is brought to you by New England Chevy dealers. Jacoby Ellsbury leading it off in center field with Dustin Pedroia at second base. Adrian Gonzalez at first base. Kevin Euclid at third in the cleanup spot. Big Poppy David Ortiz at DH with Jed Lowry at shortstop. Mike Cameron is in right field. He bats seventh. Last night's hero again. Carl Crawford is in left field. He's got good numbers in interleague. And Jared Saltalamaki does the catching. He bats ninth. Doug Davis on the hill tonight for the Cubs. His second start since coming up from AAA Iowa. 1.80 ERA and he's worked in five innings. Well, it's at 190 in that first outing in a career against the Red Sox. Three and two. The 3.79 earned run average. So that hitch in his delivery as he almost pauses. Yeah, the Red Sox will not see anything overpowering tonight. Have to be very patient with Doug Davis. 
Here's an 0 1. And the breaking ball missing 1 and 1. Ellsbury hitting at 294 homers and 19 runs batted in. On the ground towards Castro, it's short. Off balance throw. It's going to be close and not in time. Well, Ellsbury running. Ellsbury able to beat it out. That's a base hit. Now Castro got rid of the ball as quickly as he possibly could, but when uh, Jacoby Ellsbury makes a shortstop go to his right, he's going to beat it out most of the time. Nice pick out of the dirt there by Pena, but uh, Jacoby Ellsbury beats it out for the base hit. 13 steals for Ellsbury at first base. Lead runner on for the Red Sox in the first inning. Here's Justin Pedroia. 239, two home runs and 10 runs batted in. There is strike one. Pedroia didn't think so. Look back at Brian Onora. It's an eight of his last 11 games. Check on Ellsbury. He was leaning in the wrong direction. Able to get back. A little bit of a tricky move here by Doug Davis. There's Ellsbury taking a step towards second base. I don't think he was stealing. I think he was just trying to get a secondary lead. Drops inside one and one. This one gets away from Hill and Ellsbury will take second base. Picked off Coy Hill and back into his right and Ellsbury able to get to second easily. Looked like a cut fastball that time inside that just clanked off the glove of Coy Hill. And once Ellsbury saw that no problem getting into the scoring position. Two balls, one strike to Dustin Pedroia. Nothing away, three and one. And Doug Davis will turn 36 on September 21st. His second start in a Cubs uniform. He's called up on May the 14th from AAA Iowa. 66 and 75 and 213 starts in the National League. This is in the dirt. Gets away from the catcher, but no advance for Ellsbury on ball four to Justin Pedroia. So the first two of reach for the Red Sox here in the first inning. Two on, nobody out for Adrian Gonzalez. 314, nine homers and 37 runs batted in. No doubt Adrian's going to be comfortable wherever he hits in the major leagues, but a stretch in June when interleague starts up again where he's going to be real comfortable in a lot of the National League cities as this one bounces in for ball one. Now we've seen the pitches for Doug Davis. I mean, the fastball certainly not overpowering. The breaking ball, the cut fastball. He'll throw a change up. Most recently pitched in the majors for the Brewers last year was one and four, the 7.51 ERA in eight starts. There's a strike, one and one. Two hundred seventy eight career starts in the majors eighty eight and one oh one his record. Just outside two and one. This 
Posted five double digit win seasons. Set a career high 13 victories in 07. The Arizona Diamondbacks. Runners go. The throw to third base he is going to get away. And Ellsbury is going to spin and head for the plate. He will score as Pedroia takes third, and the Red Sox lead it one to nothing. Well, the double steal put on by the Red Sox. Dustin Pedroia following Jacoby Ellsbury. The head for a slide, and the ball's going to get by Jeff Baker, the third baseman. Once he sees that, Ellsbury comes on to give the Red Sox their first run. Pedroia on the third base. That ball bouncing out in front. Somehow you got to get that body out in front and block it. Tried to play it off to the side. It gets by him and gets in the left field. Now a 3-1 pitch on the ground off of Castro into left. Pedroia will score and the Red Sox lead it 2 to nothing. Now Gonzalez picks up his 38th RBI of the season as he takes the fastball from Davis to the right of Castro the shortstop. Castro dives, he gets a glove on it, but Pedroia scores with no problem. And Gonzalez drives in the second run of the ball game for the Red Sox. Now, Euclid takes strike one over the inside corner. 259 average coming in for Euclid. Seven home runs, 27 runs batted in. Seven game hitting streak for Euclid heading into tonight's action. It's a ball and a strike to the Red Sox third baseman. Look at the numbers along the way in this seven game hitting streak. It's two home runs and eight RBIs. Ball two, two and one. Doug Davis has not been able to record it out yet here in the first inning. Strike two, two and two. David Ortiz waiting on deck. Red Sox batting in the first. Already on top, two nothing. Inside full count. Just trying to paint the corners here, and so far has not been able to get anybody out. Rip foul on the left field line. Sox winning on Monday against the Orioles, taking both games against the Tigers. It's part of this homestand. They lost one game to Rain. Won six in a row heading into tonight's action. Nicholas will tap another foul. They've won nine of their last 11 games, and since the start of May, lead the majors with a 12 and 5 mark, playing 706 baseball since the beginning of May. Center base hit for Euclid. Gonzalez a touch second and head for third. Euclid will make it a two base hit as he cruises into second with a double. Well, right now Doug Davis not fooling anybody in this Red Sox lineup. A line shot by Kevin Euclid. He'll extend his hitting streak to eight games. Right quickly by the glove of Stalin Castro. And the Red Sox with second and third, still nobody out. 
Eight gamer now for Euclid with the double, hitting a 370. Second and third, still nobody out. David Ortiz, the batter. David takes ball one. Ortiz has faced Davis before. He is two for five in his career against the left hander. Very good numbers for Big Poppy in interleague games. 153 games at 307 average. A 1 0. Well, the interesting thing about interleague this year is where is David Ortiz going to play when we start going to these National League cities? Adrian Gonzalez at first base every day. Looks like David may be sitting for extended periods of time. Two zero. He is in there for a strike. Two and one. We do know this. He won't be catching. He won't be playing in the outfield. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty safe. <laughs> Shortstop's probably out, right? Yeah, probably. Ortiz gets jammed and sends it out to center. Bird is there to make the catch. Tagging and faking the tag is Gonzalez. He'll go nowhere. And there's one out in the first. Now Davis gets a fastball inside on David Ortiz. He's not able to really get extended and get that ball deep enough to score the run. Like Big Poppy thought that uh, possibly Gonzalez could have scored on that fly ball. So, second and third, one out, and here is Jed Lowry. To left, Soriano is there to make the catch on the liner, and there's two down. A former Yankee out there in left field making the catch on the liner. Two down. Yeah, Soriano certainly has experience here at Fenway Park. A line shot by Lowry, but a sinking line drive. And again, Gonzalez cannot tag and come home. Here is Mike Cameron, who spent his fair share of time in the National League. Part of our key matchup brought to you by New England Acura Dealers. 333 against Doug Davis and 51 at bats. There's strike one. Run at 163, two homers. The home runs came the same night. And four runs batted in for Mike Cameron. It's his 11th start of the year. Down and in, one and one. Gonzalez at third base, Euclid at second base, two down, two runs in. Swing and a miss, one and two. Is that cut fastball again from Davis that uh, registers about 80, 81 miles an hour? Left that one up in the zone, and I think Cameron very disappointed that uh, he didn't make contact on that pitch. By two and two. Cameron down if the inning continues, Carl Crawford will be next. Red Sox batting in the first. Inside and a full count to Cameron. A lot of pitches in this first inning for Doug Davis up to 31.
Cameron hits it hard. Picked nicely by Baker at third. His throw is in time, and the inning is over. Red Sox get a pair. Boston on top, 2-0 after one. Dollars will be donated to the Children's Hospital Boston Trauma Program and the Red Sox Foundation for every strikeout tallied by the Red Sox. Entering tonight's game, Ace Ticket has donated $54,775. Thanks, Ace Ticket, and remember to get your Red Sox seats at 1 800 My Seats. 21 minute wait for John Lester as we start the second inning. Marlon Bird leading it off, and he gets hit with the first pitch. Now Lester trying to come inside with that cut fastball gets a piece of Marlon Bird right above the knee it looked like. So Bird aboard here at first base and Alfonso Soriano coming up. 259 11 home runs and 23 runs batted in. Set safely in six of his last seven games. Seven time All Star. He's had 20 or more home runs in nine consecutive seasons, starting in 2002. Reached the 200 home run and 200 stolen base career mark in just 929 Major League games, the quickest of any player in league history. And now has been a full time outfielder since 2006. Strike over the outside corner, one and one. 11 home runs for Soriano on the season. You see his career numbers against the Red Sox 12 home runs against Boston. Broken bat, looper to center. Ellsbury is not going to get there. It's over the head of Pedroia. And it's first and second, nobody out. For the Cubs. Once again, it's that cut fastball from John Lester. The bat shatters, goes over the head of Lester, and the baseball goes over the head of Dustin Pedroia. So a lot of base runners here in the first couple of innings. Two on, nobody out for Reed Johnson. Former Toronto Blue Jay. With a big average, 395, two homers and 11 runs batted in. 
mentioned earlier the Cubs coming into this series second in the National League with a 278 batting average only the Cardinals with a higher average hitting at 284 as a team. The highest team batting average in the American League is the Cleveland Indians hitting at 266. So the Cubs 12 points higher than any team in the American League as far as batting average goes. Red Sox starting the night tied for third with the Royals hitting at 258 as a team. Well, Don, you're really good with the math. You really are. Uh... Thank you. Carlos Pena and I both went to Northeastern. The 0 1 is on the ground towards short. Lowry will flip to second for one on to first. It's two. Bird will take third. Ball not really hit that hard by Reed Johnson, but uh, really no problem here for the Red Sox to turn it over. Pedroia had to get out of the way of Soriano. Once he does, it becomes a pretty easy double play for the Red Sox. So two down bird at third base and Coy Hill the batter. 243 a home run and four runs batted in for the Cubs catcher. Giovanni Soto going on the DL May 11th. So Coy Hill has been doing the catching. Last six games, he's hit at 333 in Soto's absence. 1 0 is in there for strike one. Fifth season in the Cubs organization for Coy Hill, signing with Chicago back in 2006. Little pop up towards Pedroia in his steps makes the catch that ends the inning. They leave Bird at third, inning and a half done, two nothing Red Sox. By Taco Bell, think outside the bun. Wins the night against the Tigers in the bottom of the eighth. Jared Saltalamacchia broke his scoreless tie after a rain delay, driving home Carl Crawford for the Red Sox. Proved it out to be the only run of the game and kept the Sox winning streak alive. Play of the week is brought to you by Taco Bell. Well, Jared Saltalamacchia batting second here in the second inning. Two nothing Red Sox as Carl Crawford leads it off and takes ball one. Crawford hit a 
Bases loaded walk off single in the ninth inning last night. His third walk off hit of this season and the ninth of his career. Ball 2 2 0. Oh. Doug Davis had to throw 32 first inning pitches. Gave up two runs, but get out of the second and third situation, prevent any further damage being done. In there for a strike, two and one. The strike two and two. Crawford didn't like strike one and liked strike two even less. Yeah, Crawford thought that ball was down and away. We'll take a look in the Amica pit zone. Right at the bare bottom of the strike zone. Crawford slaps a foul off to the left out of play. Still frustrated over strike two. I guess if you don't like strike two, then you blame the umpire for just about everything else. It changes your entire at bat, I would imagine. Strike two. Nobody likes to be strike two. Oh, it's going to be no. frustrating. There is ball three, full count. Reaches out, protects the plate, and sends it foul again. Lead swing, and Crawford strikes out. First strikeout for Doug Davis, one down here in the second inning. Now Davis really keeping almost everything in that aw bat away from Kyle Crawford. The fastball down and away. Very late swing by Crawford for the strikeout. First strikeout of the night for Doug Davis. One down for Jared Saltalamacchia. 221 average, a home run, and 10 runs batted in. And it's ball one. Just saw him moments ago. He drove in the game's only run with an RBI double in the eighth inning on Wednesday night against the Tigers. And a swing and a miss. It's a count of one and one. Last three games, Saltalamaki is hit safely in and he's got a home run, two runs batted in. Rips this foul back into the grandstand. Red Sox baseball on Nesson is brought to you in part by Eastern Bank, the official bank of the Red Sox television network. Commitment, compassion, and love of the game. Find out what we're made of at easternbank.com. Red Sox on top two to nothing as they bat in the second inning. There's a one two pitch. And it's a fly ball to shallow right. And as ducking back is. Darwin Barney, second baseman, to make the catch. Two down as we check in with Heidi. Don, the Chicago Cubs are looking for their third straight win tonight after sweeping the Marlins in a two-game set. But overall, the Cubs are 19 and 23 and haven't gotten off to the great, greatest of starts, partially because of injuries to their pitching staff. I talked to one of their starters, Matt Garza, about who the 2011 Cubs are. You know, grinders, just hard-nosed workers. You know, it's not like we haven't played the greatest ball but that's that's the biggest thing is we haven't played the greatest ball is we can play a lot better you know the weather has been bad but you can't blame the weather all the time it's we just haven't put it all together yet and I think we're turning we're turning a good way and a lot of it has to do with uh, our rotation we lost two fifths of it in the first week so was, you know for a while there were just kind of patchwork 
One of the bright spots for the Cubs is rookie second baseman Darwin Barney, who grew up a Red Sox fan in Oregon. Don? And he just made the put out that ended the inning. It's 2 0 Red Sox. Oh, there you go. He's <laughs> looking up. He's uh, looking up. Together it works well. Yes. One without the other. Yeah, it's like bookends. He's got the Bruins covered. She's got the Red Sox covered. Us. It's. Oh, I didn't even notice we're. On. White Sox at the end of this month throughout the three game series. Great seats are available in various locations throughout the ballpark, starting with the game on Memorial Day. Don't miss the action as the season starts to heat up. Visit RedSox.com to get your tickets today. Elaine and Maggie may be here when you come to see the White Sox. They're here tonight. Not a bad present seeing the Cubs and Red Sox from Fenway Park. So it's Maggie's birthday, right? Yes. Happy birthday, Maggie. Darlin Castro leading it off here in the third inning. Castro grounded out to second base in the first. Cubs had two on in the first inning, could not score. Had two on in the second inning with nobody out and could not score. Red Sox able to turn a double play in the second inning. Cubs have left three men on through the first two innings. Sixteenth time that Castro has let off. As he takes ball two, Lester wanted that and stares in at Brian O'Nora. Now John Lester thought he had the bottom of the strike zone with this fastball. And looks like he did. The reason for the long stare by John Lester in at O'Nora. Breaking ball chopped to third, backing up his Euclid. The throw is going to be just in time. Bang, bang play as it turned out at first. Castro's out number one. Now, Castro, very good speed getting down that line, and Euclid had to really get rid of the ball quickly to get that out at first base. Picks it up on the second bounce. Crow hop step, and the long throw across just to get Castro. The one down here in the third inning, Darwin Barney. Grounded out to third base in the first inning, 0 for 1. And he takes strike one. Taps it foul and quickly down 0 and 2. Just 25 years old. Made his big league debut last year with the Cubs. Former fourth round draft choice by the Cubs in 2007. He 
in the dirt one and two. Cutter sent foul down the right field line. It's still one and two. Barney now. Jeff Baker will be next with one out here in the top of the third for the Cubs. One two pitch to Barney. Her ball is set in the air to right field, and this will land fair. Jump up into the seats. It'll be a ground rule double for Darwin Barney. A pretty good battle put on there by Barney. Gets down a couple of strikes, gets the breaking ball from John Lester, and goes out to the outside part of the plate and just slaps it to the opposite field. One bounce into the stands for the ground rule double. Right off the hands of a Cub fan down there. One out, Barney at second base, and here's Jeff Baker. Single to left field in the first inning. One of now four hits off John Lester through two and a third. And it's ball one. Jeff Baker has been crushing lefties this year, hitting 457 against lefties as he takes a pitch outside. It's now 2 0. Oh. 16 for 35 against left handed pitching. Originally, Colorado Rockies fourth round pick in 2002 and made his Big league debut in 05 with the Rockies. Same time at first base, second base, third base, left field, and right field. There's a strike over the outside corner, two and one. Coming into this game, hitting at 342 and already tonight. Is a base hit off John Lester. Outside three and one. Next pitch will be the 40th of the night for Lester through two and a third innings. There is Darwin Barney at second base with one out. Strike two, full count. Both strikes in this at bat have been on fastballs and fastballs away from Baker outside corner. Ramos Ramirez waiting on deck. Late swing, very protected by Baker. Don Orsillo with Jerry Remy and Heidi Watney bringing you Red Sox baseball in high definition on Nesson. There we are. The coordinating producer of Red Sox baseball is Russ Ken. Senior coordinating director is Michael Narachi. Associate producer is Jim White, and our production assistant is Mark Marlocka. Did you see us? I did. <laughs> One out. Runner at second. 3 2. Baker and a broken bat liner that'll get by the dive of Lowry. Into center field as Barney will take third. And Jeff Baker in a lengthy at bat works a single with one down. Yeah, it did sound like a broken bat, but it gets by Jed Lowry, the runner at second base. Barney had to kind of wait, make sure that ball was not caught on the line, then advances to third base. See him heading back to the bag. And once it gets by Jed Lowry, he can move on to third base. So 
first and third one down. And here comes Ramirez. Eighth two hit game of the year for Jeff Baker. Lots of high averages but not a lot of runs. For the Cubs and they're trying to put together some runs here against John Lester. Ramirez with a single in the first. It's one hard towards the gap in left center field and he's going to grab some wall. Barney from third will score. Baker will stop at third. It's an RBI wall ball double for Ramirez. It's a 2 1 Red Sox lead. Cubs fans here at Fenway have a chance to cheer for the first time. Hello, Ramirez picks up his second hit of the day. As he finds the wall out there in left field, played off the wall there by Jacoby Ellsbury, but a run comes in. And you got a 2 1 ball game with the men at second and third right now. Into the shift go the Red Sox with Carlos Pena coming up. Pedroia stationed out in short right. Baker at third, Ramirez at second, and Carlos Pena's second look tonight at John Lester. Pena flied out to center field in the first. On the ground, it's the shortstop Lowry on the right side. Throws out Pena as a run scores to tie the game 2 2. Ramirez takes third, and this game is tied. You know, as tough a left hander as John Lester is. Carlos Pena has very good at bats against him. We gave you the numbers before, hitting almost 300 against Lester, five home runs. He gets that fastball and he hits into the shift, but he does bring in a run. Picks up his 18th RBI of the season. So two down on the go ahead run now for the Cubs, 90 feet away in Ramirez. Marlon Bird. The swing and a miss. Bird was hit by a pitch in the second inning. Career 282 hitter in parts of nine major league seasons for Bird, who broke into the big leagues with the Phillies back in 02. Rounds one foul and is down 0 and 2. Covidi and the Global Healthcare Products Company is a proud sponsor of the Red Sox Foundation, helping to address health needs in our communities. Birds played with the Nationals, Rangers, and last year's first year with the Cubs. And he fouls one straight back. A 220 hitter, with runners in scoring position on the year. He's got Ramos Ramirez at third base, two down here in the third. The Cubs have tied this game. Swing and a miss. Bird strikes out. It ends the top of the third, but it's now tied 2-2.
coverage of the Bruins game for Catherine Barry and Gord with Malco and Rick reporting from Tampa in the afternoon underway at 12.30 on Bruins Faceoff Live and will return immediately following the final buzzer for a full postgame wrap-up. Don't forget to check out Nesson.com slash Bruins for the latest news and Doug Flynn's live game blogs. It's a 2-2 game and the last of the third inning from Fenway Park. Dustin Pedroia, Adrian Gonzalez, and Kevin Euclid to face Doug Davis. We had trouble in the first, giving up two runs, but then tied the side in order in the second. In fact, he has retired six straight batters as Pedroia takes ball two. Davis walked Pedroia back in the first inning. Three and zero. Oh. There's a strike. Three and one. There's Adrian Gonzalez. Will be next here in the bottom of the third inning. Ball four, second time. Davis has walked Pedroia. Want to get your dad one of a kind Father's Day gift by a Fenway Park brick that becomes part of Red Sox history. Your unique message will be engraved into a brick placed inside the ballpark concourse at Gate B or Gate C. You'll also receive a free replica of the brick with a custom case to proudly display in your home or your office. Bricks are available in limited quantities, so visit RedSox.com slash bricks to get your brick today. Pretty cool gift. As Pedroia is at first, and Gonzalez takes ball one inside. You're going to get one of those bricks, right? Yes, I am. You? I believe so, yes. I didn't know what to write on it, though. That's the whole thing. Just put Remdog. Or yeah, probably Jerry. a good idea, yes. yes. In there for a strike, and it's one and one. Put your website address. No, it wouldn't fit on the brick. <laughs> Gonzalez with a single to drive in a run in the first inning, part of the two run first. Gonzalez opposite field with power and high off the wall. Bird will play the carom as Petroya will stop at third. It's a very long single. Missed the cutoff man, but it's backed up by Carlos Pena. Well, there's that opposite field stroke for Gonzalez. It was on a changeup. What a great job of staying back on this pitch by Gonzalez and taking it off the wall. He was thinking about going to second base. He stopped and retreated to first base. The ball got by the second baseman. But the right move by Gonzalez, it was played beautifully off the wall by Marlon Bird. As Gonzalez thinking about two, but no nope, play right in front of him, goes back to first base. First and third, nobody out. Red Sox trying to answer the two runs scored by the Cubs in the top half of this inning. As Kevin Euclid stands in on the right side. Got a double in the first. And takes ball one. Tried to hold up and it grabs the bat one and one. After a one, two, three, second, and Davis retiring six in a row. It's a walk and a single that starts this third inning. In the air to shallow right. Johnson coming in. We'll see if Pedroia will try it as Johnson makes the catch. Here comes Pedroia. Here comes the throw, and it is not in time. Red Sox take the lead. Nice slide by Pedroia. 
Slides away from the tag of Coy Hill and the Red Sox on top 3-2. Well, Pedroia made that decision all on his own. I believe he was being held up by Tim Bogar, the third base coach. But watch Pedroia go around the tag and get home plate with the hand. He saw the catcher going in toward the pitcher's mound. He slides away from it. There's Pedroia. He's checking it out himself. He's not even looking at Tim Bogar, the third base coach. Excellent look there in the double box. One out Gonzalez at first and David Ortiz takes strike one. Foul to the left 0 and 2 David flied out to center field back in the first inning. One and two. Two runs in the first for Boston. A run here in the third so far. And Ortiz batting with one out and Adrian Gonzalez at first base. Ortiz to left. Soriano play it off the wall. As it kicks away, heading for third is Gonzalez. Going to try and score him. Throw from short left, and he's going to be out at the plate. Throw to third, and Ortiz gets there safely. And Gonzalez trying to score from first was sent by Tim Bogar, and he's thrown out. How about that relay throw from Stalin Castro, the shortstop? Again to the opposite field for David Ortiz, and watch this relay throw. He's already around third base and all the way in the air and they're just waiting for Adrian Gonzalez at home plate. So Ortiz ends up at third base two down and now Jed Lowry will try to bring him in. Jed lined out to the left fielder right at him. Alfonso Soriano in the first sharply hit ball but on a line to Soriano. Obviously with nobody out Tim Bogai would not have been sending. Gonzalez on that particular play with one out. Takes the chance it takes the perfect relay and it was a perfect relay. Sharply hit by the dive of Baker at third. Ortiz will score. It's an RBI single for Jed Lowry, and the Red Sox lead it four to two. Now Baker, who made a fine play in the first inning, saving a couple of runs that time, can't quite get to the ground ball hit by Jed Lowry. The cut fastball inside. Lowry's ready for it. Gets it by Baker, the third baseman, who goes into the dive, and the Red Sox pick up another run. Mike Cameron takes a pitch in the dirt. No advance for Lowry at first base. Cameron grounded out to third base in the first. Red Sox getting two in the first and two so far here in the third. Bounces in and is knocked down by Hill. Lowry still at first. Nice play there by Coy Hill, keeping Jed Lowry out of scoring position. This ball bouncing well out in front of the plate. Nice job sliding over, covering up the five hole, knocking the ball down, and keeping the runner at first.
Weekday mornings at 6, catch the Dennis and Callahan Morning Show on the WEI Sports Radio Network and right here on Nesson, number one morning show in Boston. So if you haven't tuned in yet, try it Monday to find out what the rest of New England already knows. It's Dennis and Callahan, weekday mornings at 6. Three and zero oh to Mike Cameron. Cameron may have the green light here. Three and zero oh with Crawford on deck. Takes a strike. Three and one. Cameron thought he had ball four. Swing and a miss and a full count now. Cutter has been a problem for Cameron. Who was swinging a miss on a cutter earlier from Davis. And here the swing and a miss full count. Ted Lowry at first two down outfield straight away for the Cubs. Already the 69th pitch of the contest for Doug Davis. Cameron will strike out to end the inning but the Red Sox get two runs and lead it four to two at the end of two and at the end of three. And make sure you call in the relief quencher. Cumberland Farms Chill Zone. It's all your favorite frozen and found refreshment in one place for just 79 cents any size. The Chill Zone, only at Cumberland Farms. Top half of the fourth inning back at Fenway Park. 4 2. Red Sox on top of the Cubs now. Alfonso Soriano leading it off and taking strike one. I've seen about everything now. I mentioned a couple of nights ago that there's going to be a story coming out on Don in the Providence Journal by a week from Sunday, I believe. But we actually have paparazzi in the booth. Ooh, that had to Their base coach getting hit in the line drive, but seems to be okay. And we have cameras in the booth yes. following Don. We have a camera mounted that's following Don. Look out. Looks like I got him right in the kitchen. Kind of tough, to, a lot of pressure working right. like this. Would you call this paparazzi? Yeah, absolutely. Pitches in the dirt. Did he go? 
Yes, he did. And they ring up Alfonso Soriano. Second strikeout for Lester. That's the 41st time that Soriano has struck out this season to go along with only six walks. The breaking ball, the curveball that time from John Lester bouncing in front of the plate. Look at this. <laughs> this is paparazzi. This fine gentleman is taking some quick photos. He got by security and got in here somehow. And but there's a mounted the camera. There's a mounted camera yes. over there, too, that's also taking pictures of you. Now you know what those Hollywood stars yes. go through. Feeling a lot of pressure. It's in there for a strike, and it's 0 1 to Reed Johnson. Don's already pre uh, bought all those <laughs> copies that are coming out a week from Sunday. <laughs> the one to Johnson is on the ground and by the dive of Lowry into left. A one out single for Reed Johnson who's got good speed. Now Reed Johnson 0 for 4 in his career against John Lester gets a curveball that stays up in the zone. And Johnson with the ground, the uh, topspin ground ball through the infield for the base hit. He's now starting the video portion, I think, Jerry. Still shots. <laughs> How do they put video in a newspaper? I don't know. I think it's for the uh, Projo website. Oh, so oh this goes is, along this with is it. Going to be huge. One out, one on. Coy Hill popped out to second base in the second. Takes ball one. This is the video portion now. Look at this. <laughs> How do you feel? You feel pretty comfortable? I feel okay. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Two and oh. Yeah, that reminds me if there's any part of me in this video or picture, it will be, you'll cut it out. You'll have it cut out before it hits the paper. I don't have editorial control over this. Oh, they you can do what they you, want. I'm sure you've already told them. <laughs> Listen, if there's any shot of Jerry, cut him right out. Cut him out. You can leave his shoulder or arm. <laughs> two old pitches in there for a strike. And it's two and one. Say this because they're an advertiser, but the people at CBS who do my eight by tens, they always say you want to take Jerry out, right? I said, yes. Then I leave. Two one is a strike over the outside corner. So my grandkids will say, they'll say, you know, you walked, uh, you worked with Don Arcillo, didn't you? Well, what's going on around here today, anyway? This is a Tom Gilmet, our high third. ESPN the magazine doing some things here on Tom Gilmet. Wow. There's a lot going on here today at the ballpark. Two two to Hill. And it is tap foul. And my grandkids will say, Dude, what'd you do for a living? I'll say, Well, I, I worked with a guy named Don. And if you want to see proof, you can see like my elbow. <laughs> And all the pitches that he's got of me. <laughs> There's my elbow with Kevin Costner. <laughs> That's re it really is mine. <laughs> Have breakfast with Larry Lucchino, Charlie Jacobs, and Steve Palayuka on May 25th as they talk about the big business of sports. Register at eventmanagement.org slash New England. Well now one on Coy Hill batting. Two and two the count. And a check swing. And did he go? They checked. No, he did not. Says Alfonso Marquez. And it's a full count. A very similar pitch that he threw to Soriano that got him the strike out on. This time uh, Hill is able to hold up. Popped out to second base first time up now waiting on a 3 2. And there's ball four. 
First walk given up by Lester comes with one out here in the fourth inning. Now John really hasn't had a smooth inning yet in this ball game tonight. One out, two on, and Starlin Castro coming up. Grounded out in the first inning, grounded out in the third. There is strike one. Thirty one batting average for Castro coming into this series. Cubs have had at least two base runners in every inning. Finally got to Lester for two runs in the third now threatening again here in the fourth inning. Swing and a miss. That was coming in on him. Good cutter, and it's 0 2. That's what you call swinging from your heels. Cut fastball inside, loses his balance. Swing and a miss. Lester needed that as he strikes out Castro. Third strikeout for Lester, and there's two down in the fourth inning. Right back to the cut fastball again for John Lester, but this time keeps it down in the zone and swinging on top of it is Castro for the strikeout. Darwin Barney coming up. Rounded out in the first, doubled and scored in the third. Lee Johnson at second base, Hill at first. And a ground ball to short to Jed Lowry. His throw is good, and Lester is out of another jam. Three and a half done. Red Sox on top, 4 2.
McCarthy for Ness and Daly, presented by Sun Life Financial. Should check in with the latest on the Bruins. Alko Foniamo will report from Tampa. Jack Edwards and Gord Kluzak will be in studio. And Andy Brickley will tell us the keys to winning game four tomorrow afternoon. It's all coming up on Ness and Daly tonight after our Red Sox coverage, only on Nesson. Carl Crawford leading it off here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Crawford struck out in the second inning. One of two K's for Doug Davis. To right field, Reed Johnson moving in and over. Handles out number one as we check back in with Heidi. Well, Don, as we mentioned earlier, the Red Sox sent Jose Iglesias back to AAA and called up Drew Sutton. But Terry Francona said Iglesias really just needs a few more at-bats. Thus the move. Just, this kid needs to play. He even understood that. You know, I thought the experience was really good for him. I thought he did a terrific job of paying attention and kind of following PD around, things like that. But he needs to play. So, and with Jed about playing every day, you know, I don't think it's as glaring having to have just the backup shortstop. In other Red Sox news, Josh Beckett talked today about coming out of the game early last night with a stiff neck. He said the muscle spasmed on him and is sore today, but he is fine. He said there was never a thought that he would miss a start or anything like that. In fact, he did his scheduled workout as normal today and said this sort of thing usually just lasts for about 24 hours. Don? All right, Heidi, thank you very much. Certainly good news. Wondered why he left the game last night, found out during the game, and then now finding out that it's not that big a deal, which is good news. Yeah, that is good news now. We were speculating last night, curious about why he had left the game. And, of course, after the game, found out it was a stiff neck. 2-0 pitch to Salta Lamacchia. Misses for ball 3-3-0. Three, three and oh. Talk about a contrast in style last night. Justin Verlander. Tonight, Doug Davis. Ball four and a four pitch walk. Salta Lamacchia down to first base. Third walk given up by Davis. It's time now for tonight's AT&T trivia question. Since 2001, who are the only four players to appear in both the Red Sox and Cubs opening day lineups? The answer for you in a little while. Salta Lamacchia on with one out in the fourth inning. And Jacoby Ellsbury. Batting for the third time against Doug Davis. Ellsbury singled in the infield in the first and grounded out in the second. Here he is in the fourth. And it's one and two. Ellsbury does have a base hit tonight. Had gone back to back games without a hit for the first time since April the 6th. But a one for two night so far for Jacoby Ellsbury, who bats with one out and one on. Throw over and sprawling back to the bag is Salta Lamacchia. That move to first base is really borderline. It's uh, really kind of playing with the angle, isn't it? It almost looks like he's coming home with that front foot, but that late movement to first base. There is strike three. Ellsbury does not like the call. His third strikeout victim for Davis, and there's two down. Now Davis going to the outside corner with the fastball to pick up the strikeout against Ellsbury. And you can see why Jacoby was not happy. He thought the ball was outside. And a tough pitch to take with two strikes. So two down, and Dustin Pedroia, who has walked twice in the game and scored two runs. 
Doug Davis has walked three so far, including one in this inning. As Saltalamaki is at first, and these fans are waiting for the laser show to begin. Numbers for Doug Davis through three and two thirds innings, six hits, four runs. It's walked three, struck out three. Ball two, two and one. Solace waits on deck. There are two outs here in the fourth. To the left and towards the corner, it's a fair ball. Saltalamaki will be stopped at third. It's a double for Dustin Pedroia, who's on base for the third time tonight, his first hit. Looks like a changeup that Pedroia gets this time that stays inside. That was supposed to be down and away, but stays inside, and Pedroia right down that left field line. Rattles around the 310. Soriano gets it back in and runs it second and third for the Red Sox. Pedroia now two for six in his career against Davis. He does have a home run against him. He was safe and secure, safe and secure in New York life. Da, da, da. Second and third, two down. And Adrian Gonzalez coming up. Adrian has two singles in the game, both to left, and has driven in a run. Takes ball one. Action for the first time for the Cubs. Left hander up, Scott Maine. In again for ball two. Red Sox about a base runner in every inning but the second inning. And now have second and third, two down. A chance for Gonzalez to do more damage. Takes the 2 0 for strike one. Again, Davis staying in, but got the corner this time. Yeah, that time stayed inside with a cut fastball. Red Sox two for five with runners in scoring position so far tonight. Close, but it's ball three. Davis wanted it in a big way. Ball's outside. Off to the left, full count. When you're on the road, take some peace of mind with you. Triple A roadside assistance can save the day. The Triple A card can help you save every day. Call 1 800 Join Triple A or join online at AAA.com. After tonight, be Fox tomorrow ESPN Sunday then we will be on the road in Cleveland beginning Monday night. Red Sox and Indians and then it's on to Detroit to take on the Tigers as part of this next road trip. Here's a liner that is into right field for Gonzalez. From third comes Salta La Macchia. Here comes Pedroia and the Red Sox lead it six to two. Adrian Gonzalez drives in two more. Hang City with this breaking ball. It's just going to hang up about let a high to Gonzalez. And he just hits the line drive right up over the head of Barney at second base. He had been trying to stay inside with him with fastballs and cut fastballs. Floats up a breaking ball. And Gonzalez makes him pay. That is the night for Doug Davis. Red Sox lead it 6-2. to two.
Turn to Frank Webb's Bass Centers, the showrooms of FWF. Find a showroom near you at frankwebb.com. Six two Red Sox on top as the Cubs make a pitching change. Doug Davis done after three and two thirds innings. Red Sox get to him for eight hits and so far six runs. Kevin Euclid welcomes Scott Maine to the game as Maine. The left handers is called the bullpen is brought to you by New England Ford dealers. Lefty Doug Davis to lefty Scott Maine had a no decision against the Marlins hearing last night throwing just four pitches working a third of an inning. It was recalled from Triple A Iowa prior to Tuesday night's game. One one is away and it's two and one. Nicholas hit a double in the first inning and has sack fly in the third. Maine was closing games for the Iowa Cubs. High drive, deep left, ball crushed by Euclid right out of Fenway Park. Two-run home run, Red Sox lead at eight to two, and an absolute blast for Kevin Euclid. Now you having a big night, a double sacrifice fly. Now the two-run bomb, home run number eight on the season for Kevin Euclid. Oh, did he ever crush this one? Fastball, belt high, way out of Fenway Park. Five hundredth career RBI for Kevin Euclid, and a two-run home run. Ortiz fouls it off to the left. Hess and Hess Express, the proud sponsors of the Red Sox and the Red Sox on Nesson. During the 2011 Red Sox season, Hess and Hess Express will donate $500 to the Pediatric Trauma Program at Children's Hospital Boston for every Red Sox home run. Hess and Hess Express committed to helping the cause. Eighth home run of the year for Kevin Euclid. It's been a three RBI night, 30 now in the season. Fouls it off two and two. So the book is now closed on Doug Davis. Three and two thirds. Should be seven runs, eight hits, three walks, and three K's. Scott Main charged with a home run for Euclid. Two two. Is outside ball three. Jed Lowry will be next, and then Mike Cameron will get that far. It's two outs in the inning. Here's a 3 2 pitch. And Ortiz sends it foul off to the left. And a nice grab by a fan up in the upper deck to the left. Ortiz broken bat soft liner and one hopper and a little bit shortstop and it's thrown away. 
Backed up by the catcher. He'll run in front of the Red Sox dugout, but Ortiz will reach. The shift was on, and Baker, the third baseman, was on the right side of the infield. It's Starlin Castro, the shortstop, throws it away. Yeah, Castro really didn't get much into that throw. He was kind of backing up, as you can see right there, making the play, and then just kind of took for granted he was going to throw out Ortiz at first base. There's no catch at first base by Pena, which is very unusual. In Ortiz safe. Charged with an error. So almost like one of those plays down where he could have set himself and made a good strong accurate throw to first base to get Ortiz. Judd Lowry the eighth member of the Red Sox to bat here in the home half of the fourth inning. It's been a four run fourth inning so far. And he bats with David Ortiz at first base. Larry with a single and an RBI in the third inning, a one for two night. Old foul, one and one. I couldn't believe it driving into the ballpark today. I actually saw blue sky and sun. What is that? Where did that come from? <laughs> First time all homestand. We have had some miserable nights here at Fenway Park, and you got to give credit to the fans who came out during those nights. Were much nicer nights tonight. We are fog free for the first time tonight. Ball two, two and one. This guy's been busy over the last week. Yeah, they deserve a rest. A well deserved rest. We we're talking about the Cubs earlier and their batting average being so good. They're second in the National League, but they're pitching. Not so much. 4.50 earned run average. Only the Astros with a higher earned run average. There's a strike and a full count. Three two pitch. In the air to left. The wall for Lowry. Ortiz heads for third. Throw goes to second. Lowry's going to duck back to first, and he'll get there. Put the brakes on about halfway to second base. Collected quickly by Soriano in left, and it's a long single for Jed Lowry. Ortiz gets to third. Well, the Red Sox have made some good, solid contact in this inning. Another hard hit ball, line drive that's going to find that left field wall. Nicely played by Soriano as he gets it back into second base and Lowry has to retreat. He was about halfway down a second. Mark Riggins, the pitching coach. Scott Main taking over for Doug Davis and has not had any success. He's not yet recorded an out. Mike Cameron batting with runners at first and third and two down. Cameron grounded out in the first, struck out in the third. There's strike one. John Lester has had to wait so far 24 minutes in this bottom of the fourth inning.
Red Sox already have 10 hits tonight as they bat here in the fourth inning. Ortiz at third, Lowry at first, two down. Two and one. Side three and one. Carl Crawford lined out to begin this fourth inning. Cameron, ninth man to bat in the inning. And a foul off to the right, full count. He's at third. Lowry crossed the diamond at first. Two down. Cameron takes ball four and heads down to first base to load the bases. For every Red Sox game that goes into extra innings or the Red Sox get a save, CBS Pharmacy will donate $500 to Children's Hospital Boston. CBS Pharmacy is the official pharmacy of the Boston Red Sox. Carl Crawford lined out to begin this inning, lined out to right fielder Reed Johnson. He is 0 for 2. He is struck out and lined out. And he takes ball one. One for three in a Red Sox uniform with the bases loaded. It's outside two and zero. Oh. Right now, Maine having trouble with everything: his fastball, his breaking ball, Payne coming in trying to calm him down a little bit. There is action behind him. James Russell is up, a left-hander. Four lefties in the bullpen for the Cubs. Crawford with a swing and a foul tip. And it's two and one. Two and two now. With a big blast in the inning, a two run home run. On the ground is short. Starlin Castro will go to first and he gets it there just in time. Kevin Euclid with a two run shot for Euclid, his eighth home run of the year. It's all part of an 8 2 Red Sox lead.
help local families by donating $1,000 for every home run Adrian hits this season to select Habitat for Humanity affiliates in eastern Massachusetts. Jeff Fisher and Jared hanging out here at Fenway Park. Of course, Jeff, a Nesson producer and associate producer with us for a couple years here on Red Sox baseball. And Jared plays in the Charlestown Little League. Join the game here tonight at Fenway Park as we head to the fifth. Jeff Baker leads it off after a 30 minute wait for John Lester. Had yeah, Jeb Tola is that in the game the other night. He hit a home run to Jared and then came in to pitch and struck out four guys in a row. He's doing it all. This one is fouled off down the right field line and it's one and one. Baker has two hits. He's got another as he sends it into right field. He is three for three. And he's had hits on three different types of pitches a change up, a fastball, this last time the curveball from John Lester that he shoots the opposite field for the base hit. Lester leaving that curveball up in the zone, and Baker jumps on it. Already his fourth three hit game of 2011. He's at first for Aramis Ramirez, who's got two hits of his own tonight. Single and a double. Buster has not had a one, two, three inning all night and will not here in the fifth. There's a pop up down from first is Gonzalez and in fair ground makes the catch. One out for Carlos Pena. He's fly to center and grounded to short. He's 0 for 2. Seventieth pitch of the night for John Lester. And it's outside ball one. Carlos Peno hit 46 home runs in 2007 for Tampa Bay. Uh, 28 last year and wor worked out to be his last year in Tampa. 39 the year before. Five so far in a Cubs uniform. And a swing and a miss. One and one. And is signing just a one year deal here with the Cubs. Side ball two. 235 home runs for Carlos Pena in his career. Well, the best stretch he had in his major league career was in Tampa Bay after being drafted initially by Texas, spending time with the Rangers, Oakland, Detroit, of course, brief stay here in Boston, and then landing in Tampa Bay in 07. Lays off at 2 1 and it's 3 and 1. Yeah, that's really where he found himself as a player down with the Tampa Bay Rays. Kind of kicked around with different ball clubs and finally found himself a home and had success.
inside and Lester walks him. So there's the second walk given up by Lester. So we check back in with Heidi. Don, I'm over here at Bashu where JQ just showed me how to roll sushi. It was a really cool experience. You can check it out on my video diary at Nesson.com slash Heidi. But we're here to show you that the sushi is made fresh right here across the street from Fenway at Basho every afternoon. It's packaged into these little containers where they take it over to Fenway Park every day. So we walk just across the street here to Fenway Park where the Basho sushi is delivered fresh two to three hours before every game. It's available in six places around the ballpark, including the EMC Club and on the concourse at all of the deli stands. And it's really good, particularly the Heidi Watney rolled California rolls. Don? All right, Heidi, thanks very much. You like sushi, don't you, Don? I love sushi. Yeah, you have that quite a bit mm -hmm. uh, when we go on the road for lunch. You don't like sushi, do you? Uh, not a huge fan, no, but uh, of course that looks like outstanding sushi, and I'm sure I would like that. I think you'd be all right if you stay with the basic stuff. You just don't want to get into the really mushy raw fish. Probably recommend staying away from that. Yeah. Swing and a miss. It's a point two. Baker single to begin this inning. Ramirez popped out. Pena walked. All of a sudden. Cubs have two on. They've had two on in every inning. But trail eight to two as they bat here in the fifth. And a bit of a struggle tonight for Lester. But he's able to strike out Bird to pick up his fourth strikeout, two down. Now that's where he's been trying to get that cut fastball all night long down and in against those right handers. Perfect cut of that time for John Lester. The K Minner. Putting up number four. The pitching line is brought to you by Ace Ticket. Four and two thirds, eight hits, the two runs, two walks, and four strikeouts, and 77 pitches through four and two thirds for Lester. Alfonso Soriano. Soriano was a member of the Yankees. He could virtually never walk. Remember how aggressive he used to be. He has 40 strikeouts this season with six walks. And it's a ground ball to deep short. Lowry, long throw off balance again, off the glove of Gonzalez. The run will score. Baker comes in from third. And it is now second and third as Gonzalez is trying to stretch it out. And it goes off the glove and a run will score. It's now eight to three. Well, very long throw by Lowry at shortstop. Gonzalez trying to keep contact with that first base bag while reaching out and trying to make the catch on this. Ball gets by him and a run scores. It's like Gonzalez got a glove on it, but the glove just was just not quite big enough. So it is a base hit for Soriano, but then an error on the throw that allows the runners to move up. Second and third now, two down for Reed Johnson. Bounced into a 6 4 3 double play in the second and singled in the fourth. Tap foul. Johnson, 34 years old. Saw a lot of him when he was in Toronto with the Blue Jays, the team that initially drafted him. First got to the big leagues at 03 with the Blue Jays for four seasons and now in his third year with the Cubs. The stop in LA in between. Fights it off foul and it's 0 2. Number of the Dodgers last year in 102 games at 262. And back at the Cubs, where he was in 08 and 09. Boy Hill, number nine man, waiting on deck. Two down here in the fifth.
In the air to left field, struck well. Crawford going back onto the track to be off the scoreboard. Pena will score. Soriano will score. It's a two-run double for Reed Johnson. And back come the Cubs. It's now eight to five. Now this has been a real battle tonight for John Lester. He tries the curveball again right here. It stays down a little bit. But a nice piece of hitting right there by Reed Johnson right off the top of the scoreboard to drive in a couple of runs. So back in the ball game on the Chicago Cubs. This has not been an atypical John Lester performance tonight. Two down, three runs in here for the Cubs, and Coy Hill coming up with Reed Johnson at second base with his sixth double of the year. Coy Hill has popped out and walked. Already 20 hits in this ball game, 10 for each side. There's strike one. On the ground left side, Euclid to his left. The throw sidearmed and in time to end the inning. But the Cubs come up with three runs halfway through this one. It's 8 5 Red Sox. Brought to you by Eastern Bank. Commitment, compassion, and love of the game. This is just some of the things Eastern Bank is made of. Find out what we're made of at easternbank.com. Last half of the fifth inning back at Fenway Park. Lots of offense tonight for both sides. John Lester giving up five runs through the first five innings. 8-5 Red Sox lead. Both teams with ten hits. And it's Jared Saltalamaki who leads it off in the home half of the fifth. Scott Main returning to the mound. Faced five batters and got the final out of the fourth inning, gave up a run of his own. 
as Salta Lamaki it takes ball one. Here tonight has popped out to second base, walked and scored. Up and away, and it's two and one. Two and two. Yeah, both strikes in this at bat to Salta Lamakia have been on the change ups. We didn't see any last inning from Maine. We're seeing him here in the fifth inning. High drive, deep left field for Jared Salta Lamakia towards the monster seats and gone. Second home run for Jared Salta Lamakia. Second home run given up by Scott Maine. And the Red Sox on top 9 5. Well, after a couple of pretty good change ups away from Salt Lamakia, he tries to throw the fastball by him inside. And Salt Lamakia picks up his second home run. Above the belt. Underneath the letters and off the Volvo side. Is this towards the gap in right center field? It'll get down to the track in the wall. Ellsbury will pull it up at second base with a double. And right now, the Red Sox taking some pretty good swings at Scott Mann. Now, Jacoby picks up his second hit of the night. Had a hit against Davis back in the first inning. And now runs one out to the Red Sox bullpen as James Russell loosens in the bullpen. First pitch fastball, Ellsbury. He's thinking about three, but held up at second base with nobody out. There is Dustin Pedroia, who's been on base three times tonight. He's walked twice and doubled, and has scored three runs. Time the Cubs inch closer, the Red Sox go back to work. And back on top now, nine to five. A 1 0. 2 0. Doug Davis started this game for the Cubs, three and two thirds innings, eight hits. Seven runs. He walked three, struck out three, and now Scott Main having trouble again in the fifth after having trouble in the fourth. 2 0. That is lined into left field. Ellsbury will stop at third. Soriano guns it home. And it's first and third. Nobody out. Fourth time Pedroia has been on his second hit. And that's going to be the night for Maine. Scott Maine will depart as the Red Sox have a 9 5 lead.
It's AT&T trivia question. Since 2001, who are the only four players to appear in both the Red Sox and Cubs opening day lineups? The answer, Mark Bellhorn, Nomar garcia Parra, Bill Miller, and Todd Walker. Bellhorn, 2004-2005 with the Red Sox. Pulled three at third base for the Cubs. Nomar, of course, in 2005 for the Cubs at shortstop after being traded in 04. Bill Miller was there in 2001 before coming to the Red Sox in 04 and 05. And Todd Walker going in 2003 from the Red Sox to the Cubs where he would start 05 and 06 as a member of the Chicago Cubs. First and third, nobody out. Adrian Gonzalez, the batter. First pitch from James Russell is in there for strike one. The pitcher makes his 13th appearance, one and four with a 7.20 ERA. One sitting at 322 against James Russell. Sliced foul, 0 and 2. Russell, 25 year old. 14th round pick by the Cubs in 2007. This marks his fifth year in the organization. On the ground towards shortstop. Castro to second for one. On to first for two as the run scores. In from third is Ellsbury, and the Red Sox have a 10 to 5 lead. Now Russell getting ahead of Adrian Gonzalez and getting that double play ball with the double play. A run comes in for the Red Sox. Cubs, Cubs there, excuse me, Don, willing to get two outs and give up another run. Kevin Euclid has had a good night, a double back in the first inning to drive in, actually just a double, and then he had a sack fly in the third and hit a two run home run in the fourth. It's been a three RBI night as he takes strike one. Adrian Gonzalez also with three RBIs in the game. Nicholas fights it off foul one and two. David Ortiz waiting on deck two outs here in the fifth. Runs that have scored are charged to Scott Maine. Goes a third of an inning and gives up three runs. Fly ball down the right field line. Long run for Reed Johnson. And can't make the catch, and it's a fair ball. Quick throw to second, and Euclid will get there safely. Johnson tied the basket catch, couldn't catch it, and lands fair. And Euclid scampers his way to second base. Now Reed Johnson had a long way to go to try to make this play and he takes a peek see how far he's got till he gets to the wall tries to make the basket catch can't come up with it and the hustling Euclid gets in the second base with the double. Nice play there by the second baseman to get the throw off but Euclid beating it. They charge Reed Johnson with an error. David Ortiz grounds one towards short. Castro's got it. The throw to first is in time in the inning. He's over. Red Sox get two more. We played five. It's 10 to 5, Boston.
Bella Insurance features Peter Gammons with Jose Iglesias. The Tigers' Justin Verlander, strange Sox wins from the 1986 season, and much more. Catch the Ultimate Red Sox Show this Sunday at noon. It is a 10-5 Red Sox lead as we head to the top of the sixth inning. Top of the order is Starlin Castro to lead it off here for the Cubs. Castro 0 for 3. He's grounded out twice and struck out. It off to the right, and it's two and one. They have changed the scoring. Euclid has got a double on that ball down the right field line. And Reed Johnson got a glove on, so Euclid has got his third hit of the night, third extra base hit at that. I kind of agree with that uh, change in the call. I, I really thought that that was a double. It was by. No means a routine play uh, for Reed Johnson. Look how far he's going to go. He takes a peek to see where the stands is. He's got the ball girl there. Everything going on. Tries to make the basket catch. I I, I really believe that was a double for Kevin Euclid. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Fifth strikeout for Lester. And there's one down here in the sixth inning. Yes. Second time he's got Castro. Yeah, and both times, Don, he's got him on that same cut fastball down and in. He's got Castro swinging above the baseball. Darwin Barney. One for three. He doubled back in the third inning and scored the Cubs' first run. Foul ball evens it counted one and one. Already a fourth round pick by the Cubs in 07. Attended Oregon State University. And help the Beavers clinch their second straight College World Series title in 07. Outside ball two. Fouled off and it's two and two. Happened so many times. The hitters, right handed hitters, they get that cut fastball inside. They swing on top of it. If they make contact, a lot of time that contact and baseball hits them. Right off the left knee, to, knee it looked like. Line to third, Euclid makes the catch out number two. Ball hit very well by Barney. Line shot, sinking line drive, but Kevin Euclid up off his feet. And then not even time for a crossover step, just down to his knees. Strike one to Jeff Baker. Lester has not yet found a way to get Baker out tonight. Baker with three hits, all singles, and he has scored two runs. And he spread it out all over the place one to left, one to center, one to right. This is back up the middle, and he is four for four. Comes in hitting at 342 into tonight's action, and four hits in four tries.
Dunkin Donuts is in its 13th year of hosting local youth groups and charitable organizations in the Dunkin Dugout a special seating section at Fenway Park. Thousands of children have had the chance to catch a Red Sox home game thanks to Dunkin Donuts. Two down in the top half of the sixth inning. Jeff Baker at first base, his second four hit game of the season. First one was back on April 8th against Milwaukee. And as Lester deals with strike one, there is action behind him. Scott Atchison starting to warm up. Lester nearing 100 pitches at 97. One and two. Carlos Pena waiting on deck. Lester got two quick outs and Castro to strike out. Barney to line out. But a single by Jeff Baker has prolonged this inning. Here is pitch number 100 for Lester. And it's inside two and two. Ball three away, full count. Lester not happy with himself at all. It's been a very difficult 101 pitches tonight for John Lester. In the air foul. He's out ahead. In the air to left field, and this will quickly get to the wall. Crawford plays the hop. Baker stops at third. It's going to be a long single for Aramis Ramirez. Well, the three and four hitters in the lineup for the Cubs really doing some damage. Four hits for Baker, three now for Ramirez. And Kurt Young bounces out of the Red Sox dugout. Israel Deaconess Medical Center, the official hospital of the Boston Red Sox, is asking, What do you know about keeping bones and joints strong? Step up to the plate and take their 9 and 8 quiz at bidmc.org slash healthy is. Two down here in the top half of the sixth inning. First and third now for the Cubs. They have had two runners on at the very least in every inning in this game. And they now. Trail 10 to 5 as Carlos Pena steps up here. He was slide out to center, grounded out to short, and walked. Brown ball right side with a shift on. It's Pedroia to first for the out. That will end the inning. Two more left for the Cubs. Five and a half done. 10 to 5. Red Sox.
Thursday, June 23rd, Creedence Clearwater Revisited will take the stage live at MGM Grand Theater in MGM Grand at Foxwoods. Get your tickets now at foxwoods.com. Last half of the sixth inning back at Fenway Park. It's 10-5. Red Sox on top of the Cubs, out hitting the Cubs 14-12. There's been plenty of hits in this game as Jed Lowry leads it off. Jed has a couple of his own, both singles to left and a run batted in. And two for three night as James Russell returns to the hill here for the Cubs to start this bottom of the sixth inning. Well, no shortage of base runners or runs in this first interleague game of the season for the Red Sox and the Chicago Cubs. The 10 runs are the most the Red Sox have compiled in a game this season. There is ball two. James Russell, the third pitcher used tonight by Mike Quaddy. Doug Davis, the starter, gave up seven runs in three and two thirds. Scott Bain won a third, giving up three runs. Foul, and it's two and two. Lowry to right field. Reed Johnson moves back maybe a step and makes the catch for the first out of the bottom of the sixth inning. Arbor coat exterior stain by Benjamin Moore. Revolutionary waterborne stain that outperforms the best oil based stains on the market. Find Arbor coat at your local Benjamin Moore retailer. One out in the sixth inning for Mike Cameron. Cameron is grounded out to third base, struck out swinging and walked. That'd be a good thing for you to do tomorrow, Don. The sun's out. Get out there with your Benjamin Moore avocado stain and <laughs> do your deck while it's dry. And the next time it rains, watch it bubble up. You may be surprised by this, but I'm really not that handy when it comes to that stuff. Really? Yeah. Not good at that. Well, there are certain people who are good at that yeah. stuff and certain people who should leave it alone. And I'm with you. I should leave it alone. <laughs> three O's in there for a strike, three and one. Used to be a lot more handy when I was younger. Really? Right? I don't know what it was. Uh, maybe because I had a house and, you know, I felt like I had to do some stuff around there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what it was. I mean, I never call myself a real handyman. Basic carpentry. Two down here in the sixth inning. I had all the tools, you know, in a nice toolbox. And then uh, when we sold the house and moved into a condo, I just left the tools. You yeah. didn't even bring the tools? Yeah. What, what if you need the tool? I don't need the tool. Call somebody. It pops up, may need a tool. Call somebody. somebody. Call somebody. <laughs> you don't even have a hammer? Uh, I, you know, I don't know, to be honest with you. I don't hang pictures. They ask me how I hang a picture. I don't hang it. I have no pictures in my house. <laughs> I have a hammer and I have lots of pictures. That, that. <laughs> someday I'm going to visit your, your home. My office? See, yeah, I've got to see this thing. My office is pretty good. You made fun of my office, though. It was in the Boston Globe some years back ago. And. There were some helmets that I have in my office, major league teams. Right. They were not set up by the standings, but since then I've heard about how I keep the standings in every division yeah, with you're, the helmets. You're sick. <laughs> when do you do that? Like every morning? <laughs> every morning you switch them around? <laughs> no, I don't. How often really, do you really do it? Don't. I really don't. Oh, you don't do it no, at all? I don't do it. Oh. That'll be part of the Providence Journal story, probably. Maybe at the end of the year. Yeah. Put them all as they finished. Ground ball right side. Barney back it up's got it. Sidearm toss in time. And it's a one, two, three, sixth inning for James Russell, but a 10-5 Red Sox lead.
Road Ahead brought to you by Safeco Insurance. Monday night will be our next telecast when the Red Sox will be in Cleveland. Pitching matchup would be Clay Buckholtz against Justin Masterson. Buckholtz hasn't lost in four starts this month. He's 3-0 and with a 1.40 ERA in that span. In contrast, former Sox pitcher Justin Masterson looking for his first win this month after he started great. He was 5-0 and to start the season. Live coverage begins Monday night at 5 o'clock right here on Nesson. It is the seventh inning, and it's 10 to 5. Red Sox on top. Marlon Bird leading it off, fouling it off for a strike two against the new Red Sox pitcher, Scott Atchison, into the game. As John Lester went the first six innings tonight, and Atchison coming in here for the seventh. Marlon Bird has been hit by a pitch and struck out twice in the game tonight. Inside and he gets hit. Second time he's been hit by a pitch tonight. Lester got him in the second inning and now Atchison in the seventh. Time for a game break in Tom Karen TC. Okay, Tom, thanks very much. Here it is 10 to 5. Red Sox on top of the Cubs with Marlon Bird at first and Alfonso Soriano taking ball one away. I also noticed the Marlins with a 4 3 lead over the Rays. That's in the eighth inning down in Florida. That one rattles the mask right off Salta Lamacchia. I had the pleasure of meeting Julia Ruth Stevens this afternoon, and Babe Ruth's daughter, outside the ballpark. Heidi Watney introduced me to her, and uh, she is a huge fan. She watches every one of our games here at the ballpark tonight. I met her as well. She's been here a few times. I think she was here last year, even. Well, here is the meet and greet. Oh. She looks terrific, very sharp, and loves Red Sox baseball. Soriano with a swing and a miss and strikes out. First K for Atchison, one down. Cut a hair from Atchison to pick up the strikeout against Soriano. Second time he has struck out tonight. Lust to get him on a curveball back in the fourth inning. Oh, which is better, the lid or the shirt? Well, you can do everything here. You can come to the game with the lid, then you can go right to the disco after the game with the Shuri. Disco's making a comeback. I think it glows in the dark. I wonder we would get something like that. Joe Castiglione has something on like that tonight, I think. <laughs> it's not as glittery. <laughs> 1 0 to Johnson is outside. I don't know if he's got it on. It's kind of chilly tonight. Had it on before. Oh, he's got it covered up. Yeah. That is identical, but it's more of a salmon. <laughs> 2 0. <and> yeah, <laughs> this is more of a red sequin. This is yes. more like something you'd see on Dancing with the Stars. It's in there for a strike, and it's 2 and 1. Reed Johnson has two hits, two RBIs, single and a double. Run into a double play back in the second inning. Yeah. 
High ball out to center fielder Jacoby Ellsbury. There's two down. When you want to hear the latest news and information on your favorite baseball team anytime, day or night, flip your radio on to WEI Sports Radio Network. It's a home for Dennis and Callahan. Heard every weekday morning at 6 and also seen right here on Nessa. It's two outs in the seventh. Marlon Bird at first base and Coy Hill coming up. Lots of good lids here at the ballpark tonight. That one took some work. I'm surprised somebody hasn't popped that. <laughs> Tough to see through it, really. It's almost like the Kentucky Derby here tonight. Yes. You know? We get to a lot of hats. Nice lids. Yeah, there you go. And that's a hat I think you would look really good in. I think so too, Don. I mean, that is you. I'm thinking of going to a hat look. <laughs> Foul outside of first one and two. I mean, something small, nothing big that'll, you know, just nice little hat. Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> actually, you know, tomorrow would be, if you have a hat, a fedora, mm -hmm. tomorrow would be a great day to wear it to the throwback uh, yes. uniform day here at Fenway. That's good for fishing on the left. Swing and a miss, and Atchison strikes out two in the inning. Seventh inning stretch. Let's check in with your need to know. With Nessa Daly, presented by Sunlight Financial, is Randy Scott. Brought to you in part by Eastern Bank, awarded highest customer satisfaction in retail banking in the New England region two years in a row by J.D. Power and Associates. Find out more of what we're made of at easternbank.com. One thing we're learning about these Cubs fans, they take their hats very seriously. Well, a lot of stuff on yes. uh, all three of those hats. A lot of work went into that. What if the inside is painful with all the pins that uh, you have to put on there? That's a good point. Last of the seventh inning. Jared Saltalamaki leading it off and fouling the first pitch off. Saltalamaki. Then Ellsbury and Pedroia to bat in the seventh. Or James Russell. He's been in the game since the fifth. Saltalamaki hit his second home run of the year. 
in the fifth inning. Lead off the fifth. And that was off Scott Main. Line to left, and it'll get in and by Soriano to the track and the wall. Salta Lamacchia at second will pull it up there. Soriano was coming in like he was going to catch, and it was quickly by him. Uh, he had no chance of uh, catching that ball. That ball was sinking very quickly on Soriano. That probably goes a base hit and an error on Soriano out in left field. I mean, he re he had no chance of making that play. Uncle Lamacchia hitting the ball hard for the second time tonight. Of course, the home run was crushed. That ball hit very hard. Single and an error. As Salta Lamacchia at second base. Second hit of the night for Salta Lamacchia. And Jacoby Ellsbury has two hits tonight. Single and a double. And now pops it up. And behind second base, Castro, the shortstop, makes the catch for the first out in the bottom of the seventh. Well, Monday night after Red Sox first pitch, join us for Red Sox Game Day Live presented by Unos with TC, Eck, Peter, and Heidi at six. Get a full preview of the Bruins Lightning game from the TD Garden to preview the Sox Indian Series, plus the Boston Globe's Pete Abraham to bring you the latest Red Sox and MLB news. It's all coming up Monday night. Our live coverage begins at five, only on Nesson. One out, Salta Lamaki at second base, and Dustin Pedroia, who takes ball one. That's always one of the fun uh, days of our job when we have to go into Nesson to the green screen and, yes. and do those little things, you know, where Tom was flipping the baseball. and we usually do it in like beginning of February. Yeah, sometime early uh, before we head down to spring training. It's a lot of fun. It gets you a lot of different positions, you know, poses. And flipping the ball, yeah. swinging the bat. And you wonder how much you're going to see it the rest of the season and how you looked when you leave there because it's going to be there. Well, they're yeah. using two of mine one when I was dying my hair, now one when I'm not. It so is confusing. It's very confusing. I look very young in one and very old in another. It's, <laughs> I haven't really aged that much over the year. Which is which? Uh, this is real. Okay. Rolling away 3 and 0. Oh. Here we go. Now this is before. Now this is real. This oh, is, this is what it is now. This is what it is. Now, well, yeah, a little, probably a little grayer now, but uh, but the, that's 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 the new look. That's uh, that's the real me. Where are they using the fake you? Yeah, I think in the open. <laughs> no, that was the open. Oh, well, then it's in something else. Maybe uh, the Papa thing with the uh, they do the what is it the revisit or the whatever it's called rejoin. Yeah, that's, that's what, what it is. is. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Really, Doc hair and Doc mustache. Really? Yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. It's like two different people. There's Jerry Remy A and Jerry Remy B. This is Jerry Remy B. This is the fake guy. It's not the real guy. It's an imposter. And here he is. Yeah, see now. Wow. Look at that. See, wow. <laughs> <Look at that. laughs> You're like 35. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> it's like your high school picture. It's Jerry's brother, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's full count. You know, I was trying to. I went through this stage, you know, where I'm doing this stuff, and I'm, you know, the more you do it, I'm going, what am I doing? You know, you got to do it like every uh, couple of weeks, you know, and it's like, uh, forget about it. You, you know, you look like an idiot. It was uh, number 15 or something. I think I had the number, I remember. Uh, it was number nine. Number nine. Yeah, and uh, I think it was 13 in the females. <laughs> Three two is a swing and a miss. Madroy is down on strikes. A strikeout for Russell, two down in the seventh inning. I figure if I'm going to get fired, you know, it's not going to be because my hair <laughs> is going gray. 
breaking ball that time for Pedroia for the strikeout. First time they've got him tonight. He's been on base four times, two walks, two hits. <laughs> I went through this crisis for about three or four years where I wanted to look young. I, I think I look stupid. <laughs> The real you is back. I'm glad you made it through that period. Yeah, it's kind of a rough, uh, rough stretch. You bought a Corvette, did a few other things, right? <laughs> Everybody goes through it. You'll be hitting that soon. Ugh. Won't be long now. You've turned 40, right? Yes. Yeah, you'll be. Uh, Two now. They'll be searching for youth over a few more years. Myself, a nice fluffy. Too <laughs> bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking about an Auburn toupee. One that does not match the hair on the sides. <laughs> you gotta get one where the back flips up. That's the key. You gotta get one where the back, when the heat comes, it flips yes. up. The humidity of the summer. Yeah. In Texas, and it just flip up. <laughs> uh, ball and a strike. You get a Corvette and a really fluffy toupee. It'll be coming up next off season. Sent foul down the left field line for Adrian Gonzalez. You know some rugs that look they're pretty good. I mean they're, yes. I mean, they're, they're expensive I guess yeah. because you know you really got to take a look at them and say hey, you know, that, that's a good looking rug. Which we do a lot. Which we do a lot. <laughs> and then there's others that are just bad bad really rugs. Really bad rugs. Really bad rugs. I mean you can tell boom right off right the shoot. How do we get here? I have no <laughs> idea. 10 5 game. Yes. Could be. Two outs in the seventh. A lot of baseball left. I just can't decide between a rug or plugs. Plugs are tough because yes. they hurt. And they plus, it takes a long time for the plugs to go out, so they look like, like if you put four plugs in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all you need is four. Four. Like you let them grow really long. <laughs> the center field. Bird going back. It's driven deep, but Bird will get back there to make the catch on the edge of the track to end the inning. We played Thank seven. Goodness. Good more hair talk. When we come back, it's 10 5, Red Sox. Stay with us for WB Mason's X Jennings Live with TC, Eck, Peter, and Heidi. Don't miss the breakdown of John Lester's outing tonight. Plus, you'll hear from both the starter and the manager in our From the Press Room segment. It's all coming up right after the game on WB Mason's X Jennings Live.
Starlin Castro will send this one back off Atchison. Trying to run it down. He does. It throws it to first, and it's just in time. Nice play by Atchison. First to stay with it and then run it down to get the out. Yeah, what a terrific play by Scott Atchison and Gonzalez at first base. Atchison first knocking it down, chasing it down. The side on throw to first and the pick out of the dirt by Adrian Gonzalez. This has by no means been an ordinary game tonight. No. One out in the eighth, and Darwin Barney is coming up. Barney had a double back in the third inning, a one for four night. There for a strike one and one. Red Sox have double barreled action in the pen. Rich Hill on the left, Matt Albers on the right. Broken back grounder right side. Pedroia at second base. Two down. Follow the Red Sox with MLB.com at bat 11 for your iPhone, iPad, Android, or Blackberry. Get live audio pitch by pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit RedSox.com for details. Two down in the eighth, and Jeff Baker is the batter. Baker's had a big game tonight. Four hits in four tries. He sends one foul off to the right. Action in the pen. Jeff Samarji is up in the pen. So I'm going to miss it. It's 0 and 2. Nice job so far tonight by Scott Atchison, who has retired five batters in a row after hitting Marlon Bird, the first batter that he faced coming in. In the seventh inning. One two pitch to Jeff Baker. He's fouled off to the right. We had uh, some ceremonial first pitch here tonight. Let me tell you something. This guy with the moss. He's got nothing now. He was throwing salad as a couple of guys with Chicago ties, of course, and Red Sox ties. But look at this. This is very hittable. Wow. This guy's got some salad. There's no hair on that. And no cheese left left in uh, X Arsenal, apparently. Cossack playing with the Red Sox and Cubs, and Pudge playing with the Red Sox and the White Sox. And both in the Hall of Fame. A one two pitch to Baker. He is in the air to right, and Cameron is back there. He'll make the catch. It ends the inning. We head for the last of the eighth. It's 10 to 5, Red Sox on top.
Brought to you by Xfinity. Red Sox scoring two in the first inning, and it was Adrian Gonzalez who knocks in a run. He was part of the first inning, give the Red Sox a 2 0 advantage at the time. They would power up as well. Kevin Euchel is hitting a two run shot in the fourth inning, his eighth home run of the year. And then in the fifth, to lead it off, Jared Saltalamaki gets his second of the year. He's off Scott Main. All part of a 10 5 Red Sox lead as John Lester gives up. Five runs in his six innings of work. We move on to the last of the eighth. And Jeff Samarja is into the game here now for the Cubs. In his 18th appearance, 3 0, the 2.96 ERA. On its inning at just 163 and 24 to 30. He's got 27 Ks, but he's walked 22. And falls behind Euclid's 2 0. Nicholas with a three hit night so far. And ahead 3 0. There's a strike 3 and 1. Smart are going multiple innings, generally two or more innings. And seven of his last 12 outings. There's strike two, full count. One hopper to shortstop. Starlin Castro's got it. The throw is off the mark, but the tag is not going to get there. Pena did his best to try to get Euclid on the way by and missed, and then Euclid gets back. Going to be another error to Starlin Castro. Castro again sailing that ball up the first base line. Pena comes off the bag and tries to tag Kevin Euclid, but Euclid. Avoids the tag then dives back to the first base back. He never tagged the bag on the way by. It becomes a race between he and Pena, and Euclid will win it by touching first base first. Now Ortiz fouls it back. One of the moves the Red Sox making the last 24 hours, the addition of Franklin Morales, a former Rocky, who is warming in the pen. A one pitch to David Ortiz is fouled back, 95, and it's 0-2. David with a double back in the third inning, the one for four night. Two from Smarja is on the ground, foul outside of first. It's time now for the Coors Light Freeze Cam. Kevin Euclid with a two run home run back in the fourth inning. Coors Light Freeze Cam brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. The ball right out of Fenway Park. And for Kevin Euclid's his eighth home run of the year, time gave the Red Sox an 8-2 lead. But it is 10 to 5 now as Ortiz takes ball two.
Ted Lowry waiting on deck. Red Sox batting in the last of the eighth. Ortiz jolts this towards the gap in left center field and it'll hit on a hop to the wall. The Euclid to third to second goes Ortiz with a double. His second double of the night. And the second time that uh, Big Poppy has gone to the opposite field for the two base hit. That inside out stroke this time on a ball that's down and out over the plate by Ortiz using left field. So that quickly with nobody out the Red Sox have a couple of men in scoring position. Red Sox now 16 hits in the game it ties the season high they had 16 hits on May 10th against Toronto and they've got 16 tonight. Second and third nobody out and Jed Lowry the batter. Two hits tonight, both singles back in the third and fourth innings, and both to left. He's got an RBI tonight, and now 19 RBIs on the season. So, Marger coming in here to begin the eighth. The error by Castro starts the inning. A double by Ortiz, and all of a sudden it's second and third. Cubs bringing that infield in. What a tough night for Starlin Castro. This one driven foul. I want to remind you coming up after the game tonight, it's Granite City Electric Red Sox final with TC Peter and Heidi. We'll check in on the interleague highlights, including the Subway Series and the Citrus Series. Plus a preview of Alfredo Aceves' start tomorrow and a look ahead to the throwback uniforms the teams will be wearing tomorrow night. It's all coming up after the game only on Nesson. Here is an 0 2 pitch to Jed Lowry. He gets jammed, pops it up. Foul ground is Jeff Baker over towards his own dugout and makes the catch. For the first out of the eighth. One down, second and third, and Mike Cameron coming up. Cameron has grounded out, struck out, walked, and flied out to right. Two and zero. Oh. Rips it foul, and it's two and one now for Mike Cameron. Side three and one. There's ball four, and Cameron heads down to first base. Second time he has walked tonight. The Amica Pit Zone is brought to you by Amica Insurance. Amica Insurance, it's not just how you covered, it's how you treated. We'll take a look at three strikeouts tonight from John Lester. Cut fastball down and in. 
And Castro, another cut fastball for the Sark strikeout. And once again, the cutter doing the honors for John Lester. Bases loaded one out in the bottom of the eighth. Red Sox trying to add on to their 10 to 5 lead. There is Carl Crawford who does not have a hit tonight. As he takes ball one. Crawford is struck out, lined out, and grounded out twice. As Coy Hill, the catcher, out to talk to Jeff Samarja. Strike and it's one and one. Let's have held on to beat the Yankees tonight two to one. While the Marlins defeat Tampa Bay five to three. Two teams atop the American League East. Head of the Red Sox both losing tonight. Here's a base hit to right. From third comes Euclid. David Ortiz going to try and score a bobbling right by Johnson. Two runs in, and the Red Sox lead it 12 to 5. Well, Kyle Crawford finding that hole between first and second, just uh, getting it by Pena at first base. And picking up a couple of RBIs. Looks like a cut fastball or a slider that time. Reaching out to the outside part of the plate and hooking the ball. Getting it past Pena. I don't think there'll be an error given there because I think quite sure both runs would have scored. So first and third. One out in the inning. And Jared Saltalamaki, the batter. There is ball one. Saltalamaki's had a good night. He's been on three times. Walk, a home run, and a single. It's also popped out. Swing and a miss, one and one. Top of the Red Sox order, Jacoby Ellsbury waiting on deck. Ground ball foul and the scramble over by the Red Sox dugout. It makes its way in. Pretty quick moves, it looks like, from Mamako Scudero. To get out of the way of that ground ball. Scooter to on the disable list for the Red Sox. Down and in gets away from Hill, but no chancing it is Cameron. This whole inning gets started in the error by Starlin Castro. Red Sox have tacked on two more runs so far here in the eighth. Uh, Mike Cameron at third, Carl Crawford at first, and one down. Comes a 2 2 pitch to Jared Saltalamacchia. Ball three. Field line foul.
Ball four and Saltalamakia down to first base. Second walk of the inning given up by Jeff Samarja. The bases are loaded. Tough to watch for Mike Quaddy tonight. Pitching has given up 12 runs on 17 hits and two more walks, two more runs here in the eighth. Riggins, the pitching coach, out to talk to Samarja here with the bases loaded, one out, and Kobe Ellsbury coming up. Ellsbury's had a two hit night, single back in the first inning, double in the fifth. Is two for five as he bats for the sixth time. Swing and a miss for strike one. Smarja this time starts off ahead. Cameron at third base, Crawford at second base, and Saltalamaki at first base. Two runs already in. One and one. Side ball two. Well, tomorrow in game two of the series, Alfredo Aceves going up against Carlos Zambrano. Zambrano four and two in the 4.89 earned run average. Game is on Fox night game tomorrow, and then Sunday night, Tim Wakefield and Matt Garza. This one fouled off, and it's two and two. So Lackey and Matsuzaka on the DL. I see a Sevis and Wakefield go Saturday and Sunday in this series. Wakefield 0 and 1 so far in the season. Supposed to start here against the Orioles the other night, his third spot start of the year, but Reigns came and of course rained out that game. Ends up going down to the bullpen for a game, was not used, and had a side session to get ready for a start this weekend. 2 2 is hit in the air, a long way towards left center field. Back is Bird, and it's going to be off the scoreboard. Cameron from third will score. Here comes Crawford. Throw to the plate, and Crawford will be safe. Two more runs in. Red Sox lead it 14 to 5. Well, just about everybody in the lineup tonight has taken part offensively for the Red Sox, and a lot of these left handers tonight have used that opposite field. The latest Jacoby Ellsbury. Ellsbury gets a slider, it looks like, and he goes inside out off that left field scoreboard. Well, the Red Sox, more runs they've had in any other game this year, and more hits in any other game this year. 14 runs and now 18 hits. Dustin Pedroia, the eighth member of the Red Sox to bat here in the bottom of the eighth inning. First in, second, with one out. And a foul off to the right. Pedroia is down 0 2.
Another foul, and Hill jumped out to grab it, but foul ball 0 and 2. Now, don't forget, coming up immediately after the game, stay with us for WB Mason Extra Innings Live. It's all the post game coverage you'll need right here on Nesson. Well, the Yankees losing tonight to the Mets 2 to 1. The Rays losing to the Marlins 5 to 3. As Pedroia strikes out for the second out of the eighth. First strikeout for Samarja, and there he is Adrian Gonzalez. Three hit night, three runs batted in. Center field, and that's in for a base hit. From second base comes Salta Lamacchia. The throw is cut off, and the throw to third is not going to be in time. Another run in. Red Sox lead it 15 to 5. It is a four hit night for Adrian Gonzalez. Four hits and four RBI in the night for Gonzalez. RBI is in his first at bat, his third at bat, and now here in his sixth at bat. Line drive right up the middle. So start of the game with 37 runs batted in. Now has 41. Red Sox have batted around twice tonight. They did it back in the fourth inning. They do it here in the eighth and lead it 15 to five. It's been a five run bottom of the eighth inning so far. As Kevin Euclid reached on an error to get it all started. Here's a 1 0. It's in there for a strike, 1 and 1. Three hits, three RBIs in the game for Euclid, including a two run home run. Fouls it off, 1 and 2. John Grabo warming in the pen. Three full count. So Marge has already walked two in the inning. Fly ball to center field. Marlon Bird is back there. And he'll make the catch that ends the inning. But in the inning, the Red Sox score five times, take a 15 to 5 lead.
Essen is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, Sullivan Tire, Dunkin' Donuts, and by New England Subaru dealers. We head to the top half of the ninth inning, now 15 to 5. Red Sox on top of the Chicago Cubs. Darnell McDonald takes over in left field for Carl Crawford. Drew Sutton just joined the team today, is at second base. As Crawford and Pedroia come out of the game, Tony Campania is going to take strike one. He pinch hits here to begin things in the ninth. Pinch hitting for Ramos Ramirez. Ramirez had a three hit night. He was three for four. There is strike three. Atchison has done very well and retired the last seven Cubs in a row. Yeah, he came in, he hit the first battery face, and since that time he's got three strikeouts. And nobody's reached base on him. Cut up, cut fastball inside corner that time for the strikeout. Three strikeout sends coming into the game for Atchison. One out in the ninth for Carlos Pena. This is back up the middle. Euclid ranging back of the bag. Off balance throw. Nicely done. Looking like a shortstop out there. Two down. A few style points there for Kevin Euclid as he ranges to his left. Two big bounces out to Euclid and now the off balance throw to first base to get the out. Two down, other pinch hitter. Looks like Blake DeWitt is going to pinch it here with two down. Pinch hits for Marlon Bird. And fouls it straight back. A reminder to stay with us for Granite City Electric Red Sox final. Complete post game coverage coming up after the game from our Nesson Studios. To left field, McDonald coming in, and that'll do it. Red Sox and Cubs meeting at Fenway Park for the first time since 1918, and the Red Sox take it to the Cubs in Game One, and winning 15 to five. We'll come back with more from Fenway Park right after this.